Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks to the organizers for accepting our talk. And today, I would like, I'm very glad that I came just right after Maria Lise because we're going to talk about the same type of sites, rock tombs, uh, but from two completely different, uh, different points of view that I think can, be, com can complete each other. Uh, so, um, why the title, Digging Where Nature Has Already Dug? Because the area that we're going to focus today is Central Italy, and Central Italy, in Central Italy, nature really has dug a lot, so uh, the landscape is really characterized by caves. Uh, there are at least 150 known caves that have Bronze Age uh, archaeological prisons, most of which are burial sites. So uh, there's plenty of uh, these features in the landscape, but even, even though there are so many caves, there is also a parallel phenomenon, which is rock tombs. So they are mostly present in, well, it's a, a much smaller phenomenon, and it's uh, focused in the central area, central Tyrrhenian area of Italy, which we could define as southern Etruria. I know that uh, it's much, uh, it's an earlier time, but geographically it's north of the Tiber uh, River, so we can define it as southern Etruscan area. And there are almost 20 known rock tomb sites in there. There are some also in, south, in southern Italy, in the Puglia region, and today we're going to also uh, deal with a new site that, that has been recently discovered and we are, going, we are investigating with my team, which is in southern Lazio, so it's far away from the other two concentration areas. So these rock, um, these rock tombs are very um, typical. Uh, shape. The shape is similar to what Maria Elise described before. So there's a corridor, it's an open corridor with two walls at the side, it's called Dromos. And then there's a small entrance that can be covered or open. And then there's the proper hypogean, uh, hypogean structure, which is usually a burial chamber. So these have been divided by shape, so the chamber can be uh, square uh, shaped or can be uh, round, sh round shaped and uh, but basically it's almost uh, the same. So these are very close to one another, those and those. There doesn't seem to be a different uh, treatment in the shapes because these are also present uh, in the same site. So there might be a quadrangular or a round shaped chamber in the same site. And these are from southern Italy. Uh, so uh, what's the interesting aspect of this structure that, that have been in, may, universally interpreted like these, at least for central Italy? Uh, we have the external part, the dramas, the corridor, where offerings have mainly been found, so pots with, uh, for example, seeds or animal offering or artifacts and so on, so some kind of uh, preliminary ceremonial practice going on there. And inside the, 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 hypogeum, uh, the hypogeum we found the funerary area, so the human bones basically. So there is this kind of spatial distinction that it's very interesting to see that we found also we find also in caves in some caves that are contemporary so in middle bronze age cave for example this is one that we are investigating in southern lazio as well and uh Regina margherita where we find in the entrance area the one that is illuminated we found some kind of preparatory uh pra ritual practices with uh hearths and uh, animal sacrifices and so on whereas in the darkest innermost part of the cave we find only the burials the human burials and this is interesting because it shows how similar these uh burial practices are to one another Another interesting feature is that uh, we often find some kind of division 
uh, of separation between the world of the dead and the world of the living, where uh, there are there are um, stone walls or big slabs that close the um, the chamber, the, in the, ch the burial chamber, and that can be reopened every time that a new burial must be inserted because these are mostly uh, multiple tombs, just not individual tombs. So it, it is a way probably to separate the world of the dead from the world of the living. And this again happens not just in rock up tombs, but also in caves, in burial caves. Since the Neolithic, we see it in the Neolithic, we see it in, in the Copper Age, and we also see it in the Bronze Age. This is the new case studies, uh, the new case study that we are now really uh, focusing on. Um, it's south, it's in southern Nazio, so you see it's far away from the southern Etruscan area, it's almost 200 kilometers away, 300 kilometer, kilometers. Uh, and there are, um, it was first discovered in, 19, in the 1980s, but it was never systematically investigated. We went there just once in 2009, and then two years ago there was this campaign where we cleaned the area and tried to refine uh, the places. So this is what we found, uh, two rock cartoons, that's before and after the cleaning, uh, with this very uh, typical shape. And this is the other one. There might be more than these, but that's what we found so far. Uh, how can we tell that these are rocket tombs, that are tombs? Because we didn't find any human bones, actually. Uh, but uh, the shape, the structure is so similar to those uh, that we have found in uh, the northern part of Lazio and southern Tuscany and in Puglia that there aren't really any other types of structures known for different purposes in this area. And also we found a lot of pottery fragments that are referred to that period, to the Bronze Age. So we concluded that these must have been tombs. And uh, the fact that we didn't find, find anything is really important to the site itself because it shows how many times it was reused, it interacted with, with people, with communities at different times. This type of rock is very, uh, is, it was uh, very often used for construction in the surroundings. So it's called Peperino rock. And actually in Roman and medieval period, uh, this area was used as a quarry, so we found the remains of a quarry, and it's possible that other Raqqa tombs were destroyed by this phenomenon. Then, uh, at a later time that we cannot really uh, locate now, uh, we found this cross, it's a cross of Jerusalem, carved on top of one of these two Raqqa tombs that indicates the presence of probably an Eastern Christian cult. That it's not uh, surprising because even if it's rare to find something like this in this area of Italy, there's in a, in a close village, which is called Grotta Ferrata, there's actually an Orthodox uh, church that is really unique case in that area, but could be related somehow. So this kind of cult existed at the time that we cannot really say. And then uh, there was a frequent occupation also during the time of the unification of Italy. In 1861, we found some coins. And finally, during World War II, this area was used as a soldier's shelter. So we found several bullets from World War II. We found several remains from the, Germany and the German and the Allied armies. So this is why I mean, this landscape interacted so much for so long with human communities that we cannot really find any trace of the original occupation. So going back, to conclude, going back to our first uh, question, so why digging where nature has already dug? So the, these uh, excavating and producing these rock tombs requires a lot of energy expenditure because peperino rock in particular, it's not a soft rock to, to carve, to work. But at the same time, 
caves, natural caves that were used for the same purposes, are very, very close to all these sites, especially in the southern Etruria uh, area. So there are five kilometers away from these rock art tombs that are natural caves that are burial caves. And also in this area where we are digging and then we are uh, investigating now, there are 20, 30 kilometers away, there are natural tombs and natural caves. So the question is, why would you dig? Why would you excavate and put so much effort when you could use caves? So the first hypothesis is the most practical one that relates a bit with what Maria Elise was saying before, that the geographical constraint might be that since uh, the um, cultural roots of uh, burying in caves was so strong that people didn't want to move so far away and they preferred to build their tombs, maybe next to the villages that we don't know about, unfortunately. Uh, but really this is a bit stretched out as an hypothesis because caves are so close, especially in the Tuscany area, that it's not really a valid explanation. So the other deep hypothesis is that there was a meaning to this high energy expenditure, some kind of uh, will to signal the importance either of the buried or the com of the community that was burying the, 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 the family or the person that was dead. So there is a very strong symbolic meaning behind the construction of these, uh, of these rock art tombs. And um, this is also demonstrated, even though in Colle del Grotticelle we couldn't find any kind of remain, in the few cases where those kind of tombs were untouched, uh, we found very rich uh, grave goods inside the, um, the tombs, basically. So this might indicate really a will to signal the importance either of the buried or of the community that wanted to give this message. And uh, this is another case, a very striking case example that I chose to put in here, even if it's not a rock cartoon, but it's a proper cave, natural cave in southern Italy that um, was a burial cave, but there also were some rock cut areas, so the cave that was big enough was continued to be dug, excavated, and there were special burials put inside those uh, artificially excavated little caves inside the caves, uh, inside the cave. And then they were covered with these kind of stone walls. So we, <laughs> when it was excavated, the walls were removed and inside there were these untouched burials with uh, swords, with uh, metal work that is rare to find in burial caves. So this really indicates how much effort it was put maybe to signal the importance of the person buried and the strong symbolic, symbolic importance of rock uh, cut sites and rock cut, to, rock cut tombs in Italy. Thank you.